The forest ecosystems contain the main natural resources that everyone needs in order to survive. It supports a whole host of diverse species and plays an important part in human existence and livelihood. It provides everything that we humans need for our living and it is a habitat for all other species of fauna and flora that coexist in it. They are also part of the ecosystem that we live in. It provides shelter, water and food for the human beings as well as a habitat for the living creatures on earth and it provides the oxygen that we all need to live. Without the forest, there is no life. Forests occupy one-third of the Earth's land area and they house around 80% of the world's terrestrial biodiversity. The Asia-Pacific region contains only 15% of the world's forest. Tropical rainforests contain the greatest species diversity of all biomes on Earth and are thought to be the world's oldest living ecosystems. Today, with the rising number of population and the rapid growth of development that is taking place in the world, people are putting more pressure on land, thus contributing to the degradation of land and the loss of forest. Like every other country in the world, the Republic of Vanuatu, an island nation located in the South Pacific Ocean, is also faced with this problem and the government is trying to put in place measures to combat this threat. In order to sustain its limited resources and maintain sustainable growth and development, a Forestry and Protected Area Management Project, or FPAM, has been established by the government of Vanuatu through the Department of Forestry and in cooperation with the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, of the United Nations. The project is funded by Global Environment Facility, JEF, as part of the Pacific Alliance of Sustainability, PAS, with the aim of conserving Vanuatu's biodiversity. The project provides technical assistance with a focus on creating awareness and educating the people about the importance of protecting natural resources and establishing and managing protected areas. Vanuatu is a biodiversity hotspot where species endemism is high and the project supports Vanuatu's national priorities of biodiversity conservation. Landowners and communities realized that uh, they have experienced problems with uh, water, water uh, source and, and uh, they also experienced negative impact from their deforestation activities they have done in the past, unsustainable land management activities and they experience as well erosion and floods. So upon the request of the government of Vanuatu and of the communities here and the landowners, the project started with assistance and that is on one side assistance to protect higher elevation mountain ranges, the forest and also assist people and new or adaptive uh, technologies and sustainable land management. In Vanuatu, the Department of Forestry identified three priority sites which received assistance from FAO's project since 2012. So far, Gawa Island in the north and Erumango Island in the south were the first ones to implement the project and are being monitored by the implementing agency on a regular basis on the progress of the work. A land management committee has been set up in those two islands to manage the protected area and handle issues regarding the conservation of their forest. Aside all the uh, implementation plan projects, we've got all the uh, community consultations with them, uh, schools consultations have been carried out finished. And let me purposely now inform them all, uh, all people, all landowners and all communities about the uh, importance no wine, you make a project for South Pentecost and why not any important blooms on the bottom or management resources for you mean South Pentecost and also even uh got all uh, uh landowners meeting. We've been uh, conducting a uh, one day meeting with them on landowners around the South Pentecost for discussing area and uh so far all landowners only club law or projects for only decide when it's having extend them uh, boundaries for water blow project and we work with them water blow on each one the bottom all the resources where we start blow island blow south pentecost in 2015 on the aftermath of the devastation caused by tropical cyclone palm on the archipelago of vanuatu 
Presley Dovo, the FAO project coordinator based in Port Vila, led a team of New Vanuatu and international experts to South Pentecost, an island situated in the north of Vanuatu, which has been selected among the three sites as a recipient of the project. The team is comprised of Chief Technical Advisor of FAO, Rudolf Hahn, FAO Consultant, Jerry Sadinsel, Brenda Andre from the Department of Tourism of Vanuatu, Robert Koeman, an FAO Consultant from the Department of Biological Science, Macquarie University in Sydney, Philemon Alla, Assistant Herbarium Manager and Botanist from the Department of Forestry in Port Vila, Mark Dunphy, a consulting ecologist in restoration and land rehabilitation from Danon, Australia, Donna Kalfatak, a senior biodiversity officer in the Department of Environment of Vanuatu, Dr. Elizabeth Broadbridge, a medical doctor, and Rick Malau, FAO consultant and documentary producer. The aim of the nine-day mission is to do a biological rapid assessment or biorap on the flora and fauna of South Pentecost and also to collect socio-economic baseline information from the local people and evaluate local community reliance on natural resources in the protected area. This data will be used for the planning to establish and manage a new protected area and how to assist the land-owning communities to generate alternative income. The proposed conservation area covers about 3,677 hectares of forest ecosystems on land shared by landowners of different communities of Pangi, Palemsi, Wali, Ranputo, Ranwas, Point Cross, Bay Homo, Salap and Wanuru village who supported and formally agreed to the establishment of a community conservation area or CCA. The final objective is to legally register it as a community conservation area and develop it in combination with the traditional land diving activities to a cultural and natural UNESCO World Heritage Site. Yeah, what we are doing here up to now uh, in South Pentecost, uh, first um, we uh, worked closely together with the landowners and communities to create awareness ab about the existing issues and um, we also come to agreements where the protected area could be located. The plan is, after going through all this information, that we are coming, can, can propose a management plan for the protected area, which is also called here Bay Homo. It's a community conservation area. And we also can come up with further assistance in areas out that is protected area. That means in the and the area where we have agriculture to come up with new methodologies in the standard land management. We come maybe with some other varieties which can, bring, can be brought to the market. We could come up with uh, ideas to, to use biodiversity in a sustainable way in terms of ecotourism to develop, to develop this further, to get some more alternative income for the local people. In 2014, nine communities on South Pentecost decided to establish the Bay Homo Community Conservation Area in response to decreasing freshwater supply and the threat that people are causing to the ecosystem from local forests. This prompted the FAO's Forest and Protected Area Management Project to step in and helping the communities to achieve this plan. South Pentecost was selected firstly because it is very rich in water resource with many water catchment sites on the mountains that produce rivers and streams which drain to the ocean, thus supplying water to the inland villages as well as coastal villages. Unfortunately, due to deforestation activities and unsustainable land management methods and growing island population, they are now experiencing the negative impacts of their actions. There is the phenomenon of soil erosion and flooding that is threatening their water sources, their gardens and all their reefs. Secondly, the island is renowned for one of its unique culture with the famous land diving ritual, which takes place every year between the months of April and June, and it consists of men jumping from a man-made tower built with materials from the bush 
such as wood and a special vine which is used to tighten their feet. It is regarded as the precursor to modern day bungee jumping. Since it is an annual event, the extraction of the fresh vines and the trees without replanting them has led to a decline of these resources. So the project came in to assist the local people in addressing those issues. I want to mention something where uh, you need blue mascot, you must cut uh, conservation uh, from law before. All the labour you mean, all you cut down the salt water, all you cut down one fish no more, all you come and tap. But now, me me, I say me too, me one man plus salt water, but me go me cut them. I think one basket fish me come and tap. Ah, is it my color river? All the labour you cut, take them one number no more. But you mean now, you me go, you me take them three, four. Everyone who you me find them, you me take them everyone. Mo is it my color all tap bush blue me? From Naya, where some work for agriculture, he can pick one, make a more big for the garden, or he make them down plant the wood. Me or some one mama, me think say he make wood play project. I come in, lo make him say you me or young fella, or young fella play you me tete, or look save, mo he make sure say you me save receive him some fella something inside the community play you me. After a 45-minute flight from the capital Port Vila, we safely landed on Lonoro Airport in the southwest Pentecost, a runway that was upgraded between 2008 and 2009 with a new tarmac airstrip capable of handling larger aircraft and operating in wet conditions. We then continued our journey by boat along the coast. It took us about an hour to finally reach our destination. On our arrival, the chiefs and the people of Ranputo village were already waiting for us. As soon as we went ashore, the delegation was welcomed by the community leaders and was treated with a traditional welcome with custom dances leading the delegation to the village where the people of the surrounding villages were all gathered for the welcome ceremony. The chiefs acknowledged the kind assistance of the FAO through the Department of Forestry for choosing South Pentecost as a beneficiary of the project. The ceremony ended with food for everyone and entertainment by the only local string band from the nearby Wanuru village and a funny play to make everybody laugh. <laughs> All these to show the FAO consultants that the people were very happy about the project, which they know it will benefit them today and their future generations. No site law conservation, I mean, I me personally, me me interest too much. Me interest too much. Learn from the lo you me lo South Pentecost. You got some something. All stop. All stop. Cope. Lo all lose. All river. Lo you me too. All stop. Cotton plant. Me a big river. You me just come back. Lo him. Me stop. Cotton plant. 
Benefit blem na wasem se by ya full up community lo bese wasem future generation we kam by benefit lo one name we imi conserve mi staff and na vala tinti tu sad lo eco tourism by mi vala all tourist by staff kam mi vala staff kat mani lo sad lo world world kam staff kam lo lo salu place we mi lo sad conserve. Pentecost Island or Raga, as commonly known by its inhabitants is located in the northern part of Vanuatu in the Panama province with a population of about 18,000 people. The island is mountainous and it stretches north to south over some 60 kilometers and has an area of about 490 square kilometers. The mountain range of which the highest is Mount Vulma, estimated at about 947 meters high, marks the dividing line between the humid, rainy eastern coast and the more temperate western coast. Despite the influence of successive Christian missionaries, the traditional customs remain strong in the island and it has a rich cultural heritage. The population of Pentecost is concentrated mainly along the west coast from north to south, although a number of people also live inland. The eastern coast is wild and inaccessible with just only five major villages. The islanders mostly live in small rural villages and survive in subsistence farming and growing cash crops. While cassava, yams, bananas, sweet potatoes and fruits such as popo, citrus, sugarcane and pineapples are grown for local consumption, the stable food is taro, a root vegetable that grows well in Pentecost due to its wet climate and kava, which is the main export of the island that generates income for the villages. Today, one of the fastest growing demands in tourism market globally is the eco-cultural tourism and has been described as a well-suited form of sustainable development. Many countries in the world are turning into this type of tourism because it helps to maintain cultural heritage, but at the same time, it creates jobs and provides income. The government of the Republic of Vanuatu, through the Department of Tourism, is also engaged in this new area and is encouraging more locals to venture into ecotourism because the country has a rich cultural heritage and also because it wants to protect its marine and terrestrial biodiversity as they are the only natural resources that we have. As seen in our first encounter with the people of Point Cross, a village in the most southern end of Pentecost, custom tradition remains strong in this island, and it has always been part of their livelihood. People have been living in their traditional ways for centuries, but today, with the population growth, people are putting more pressure on land for food, shelter and income, thus creating a loss to their forest. As part of the trip to Bay Homo, the forest experts were assigned to look at the forest and make an inventory and find ways to help prevent deforestation that is escalating rapidly in the area. Dr. Robert Koeman, who is a botanist and ecologist researcher with National Herbarium of New South Wales and the Maguari University and a specialist in rainforest ecology and rainforest botany, has been tasked 
with two other experts to carry out a rapid botanical assessment of Bay Homo community conservation area. While we're visiting South Pentecost and looking at the community conservation uh, management and uh, the reserve proposal, we're actually sampling the vegetation across the whole of the, the southern area. We're using random transects to look at the vegetation and to inventory, to do a rapid assessment of, of the vegetation, the different plant species, all the different life forms, the plants, and we're compiling lists across the different parts of the South Pentecost area. And that'll form the basis for some of our uh, ideas around how best to conserve the vegetation. The experts have noticed that a lot of damages have been done to the dark bushes, where more and more people were working further inland to find better land for cash crops, thus destroying the forest. Pentecost is renowned for its cover production, as it is the main island in Vanuatu that produces the biggest quantity of cava that is supplied to the main towns. Kava is a narcotic root used to prepare a traditional drink, which is traditionally used in custom ceremonies or on important occasions, but today it has been commercialized for a wider consumption. It is grown and drunk on many islands in the South Pacific. Unfortunately, as the demand of the local consumption of kava is rising, the people of Pentecost are enlarging their kava plantations, which leads to more deforestation and degradation of land. People are moving inland and destroying the dark bush. Cherries Adinsel, an FAO consultant with the help of Brenda Andre from the Department of Tourism in Vanuatu, undertook a socio-economic assessment in the Bay Homo community conservation area to find out how the population is using the resources in the community conservation area and identify future alternative ways to improve their livelihoods. The objective of um, mine and Brenda's uh, research is to gain a socio-economic understanding of the communities involved in the community conservation area. So understanding their income, uh, their expenses, their daily livelihood activities and uh, their understanding of the community conservation area and how this project can um, enhance their knowledge and understanding. Now we're back to do a socio-economic study of all the communities in the conservation, community conservation area and uh, this involved conducting socio-economic surveys in each community to get a representation of people's livelihoods, their income, um, expenses, and how they feel about the conservation area, and yeah, how, how, how they conduct their daily activities. The study had shown that there is evidence of a shift from traditional farming systems with diversified agroforestry systems to high input cultivated systems, particularly for cover and taro cultivation, which today are the main income source for the locals. People are putting more focus on cash cropping for their needs, particularly to meet their children's school fees and other short-term needs. But with the limited availability of land caused by the population increase had forced them to move further inland by clearing and burning the bush, which had contributed significantly to increasing deforestation within the community conservation area. Some key findings to come out of the socio-economic survey is the uh, lack of diversification with income generation. So most families relied on taro, water and dry taro gardens, which they sell to Port Vila, and kava. Um, with this, it, there's a lot of clearing of the bush happening with kava. There's, it brings down the price because everybody is growing the same things. Uh, when we found some people that are showing some diversification in their income, such as growing watermelons or uh, tra having a transport business, um, they were doing much better with their income. They much, had a much higher income and uh, were having less impact on the environment around them. Yeah. 
During our stay, the botanical team led by Dr. Robert Koeman, with the assistance of Mark Dunphy and Philemon Nala, the assistant herbarium curator from the National Herbarium in the Department of Forestry of Vanuatu, undertook a rapid inventory flora survey over a period of five days with random walks in five different locations within the community conservation area. Their task was to identify and make an inventory of the different species of plants that's already been recorded in the National Herbarium database. They recorded native and non-native vegetation and collected samples of specimen for identification. A general assessment of disturbance and disturbed areas was also undertaken during the surveys. Well, the, the key findings, of course, are that there's an intensive history of land use and it includes gardening. So there's, there's a lot of forest that has been disturbed and changed and modified for gardening, but we have also found a core area uh, of beautiful forest and uh, of, of really good quality rainforest. So we're looking to now understand how best to use the information that we've gathered from the different areas to show how these areas could be conserved and how the people can still garden and use the land but protect some of those, those core resources. I think we got uh, some species where all this stuff is. Uh, you know, you know, got some new one where we like come across the hand. I think all the same one, no more. This has this one, another plus something where we contribute or destroy my forest. Play me, and me all big leaf, uh, all big leaf to sometime time where cyclone and me pass. He, he kill him out of some wood, he make him say, he me to his stuff coincide. He coincide, he make him say, me control and full up all, uh, all push push play me, make him say, some lower generation where all this would grow up become. Or it's a state number from only in the Cavarempo, you know, Save, or in the Save Croy command up. So he met to him, he won him back with, uh, you know, human being him again, the nature him again. The findings from the study have shown that the primary forest or dark bush and the clearing and conversion of land for cover production and agriculture is accelerating in an alarming rate. The team has found out that the people are not practicing crop rotation or use previously cleared land to cultivate other crops, thus leaving it unproductive. And now it is being dominated by the native vine Meremia peltata, a coarse climbing vine that crawls up and over forest tree species and thickets, forming either a ground cover or canopy species. It smothers and strangles over vegetation. Meremia peltata is regarded by the forestry department of Vanuatu as an invasive plant as it suppresses forest regeneration after clearing the forest, but has apparently been in the Pacific for hundreds of years. One day when we start to look at the time when we start to look at it, we look at the whole bush block and the bush. All the people in the bush block, they look at the whole thing from the plant and cover, and the whole thing from the plant and cover. The villagers we've been talking to, most of them are very uh, keen to work and and, and help this situation and so I think it's very encouraging that um, the people really want to help and they just need to have a plan and then South Pentecost can be a beautiful a beautiful place with villages and gardens and forest all together. As part of the work an assessment of the flora and fauna was carried out by Donna Kalfatak, a senior biodiversity officer from the Vanuatu Department of Environment who deals with endemic species. She was assigned to examine the impact of the deforestation on animals and vegetation of the area and make a rapid inventory on the existing endemic birds, fish and reptiles that were found in Bay Homo from the previous researchers. During the study, 
a new specimen of freshwater crab was found and recorded. The research has shown that out of 11 endemic birds known in Vanuatu, eight were found in Pentecost, four of which in Bay Homo. Among the 27 geckos and skinks known in Vanuatu, the assessment has confirmed two were endemic out of the five endemic skinks known in Vanuatu. Well, uh, research is Mr. Uh, Karamato all research Pod lo all animal lo lo bush we mi all uh, all birds or all pigeon mo all lizards play me um, two with them all fish lo lo all rivers play me uh, no fish no more penaura as well um, you mi find them out se also mi previously talem forest play me mi created and mi important play me educate them plant the communities play me run lo uh, South Pentecost lo limas protect them forest. Uh, from uh, uh, water catchment to me, where uh, you may cut the South Pentecost by only my pity credit. Suppose you may not look at them good forest to you. Me. I may co- contribute to the fashion whereby uh, you may not cut enough water. I think one, one lo area where project lo forest and uh, project air, protected area management project, only look, 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 and you may must protect them water catchment to me. For need play in the community, at the same time, the protection, the survival of all species will only exist within that. The people of South Pentecost have a strong cultural connection with their land and forest. This link is celebrated every year with a land diving ritual that is associated with the yam harvest. It is generally performed in the month of April May or June. The study has shown that continuing clearing of the dark bush may lead to the loss of this land diving vine and tada phaseoloids, which can only be found in the primary forest. There is evidence that people are moving further inland to find this vine, which is decreasing every year. Today, land diving has become one of the best tourist attractions in Vanuatu, with more and more jumps every year. But the ongoing use of this special vine without replanting them can become a threat to the preservation of their cultural heritage. Therefore, one of the objectives of the Community Conservation Area Strategy is to come up with a management plan that can help the locals to use their forest in a sustainable way in order to conserve the dark bush and preserve their culture. Uh, all snake rob we all is up in some lo we can land diving lo hema. So lo area me will I find them out all all robia all is up all of finish. All is up all of finish. It means all full up all bush and tapia all the all the katema all the katem lo me plan the miam taro. It me came say all the katema all big all wood all the bone big all wood. It me came say all robia too. Only stop loose. More same time to time we only make them suppose only make them uh, five or six land. I think low one year. So it means they only reduce um, all uh, number of all robia. So it means they low ten years time. By it hard low you miss a few name all robia or get a two ball it hard low only seven make them land diving. Tourism is one of the key components of the project as it can contribute to improve the livelihood of the communities living in the protected area. The project aims to protect the forest by helping the locals to conserve their resources and encouraging them to venture into ecocultural tourism. As seen in the villages that we visited, South Pentecost has a lot to offer in terms of tourism products from artifacts to cultural activities, and they have some breathtaking mountain sceneries and beautiful beaches along the coast. There are some nice waterfalls that can be found in Bay Homo, and a few locals have invested in small bungalows to cater for the tourists and visitors that are coming to South Pentecost.
many activities such as hiking to historical sites, snorkeling, paddling, outrigger canoes and village tours are also available. Stewart Bule, a community leader from Ranputo village, runs a guest house and has diversified his activities to aquaculture. He has built a fish pond where he farms tilapia fish for his family and the tourists. Lo site lo ecotourism. Ah, fulem prochekea ba mi help mi help mi bala plante. Ana lo mi mi really interest plante le hem. Ana mi really fully support them. Ana lo kim se ba prochekea ba mi help mi bala lo fulem plante turisme mi gam. Yes. Moreover, Pangi area in Bay Homo has been chosen recently as a port of call by the Piano cruise ship. Brenda Andre from the Department of Tourism in Vanuatu was among the team to assist with the socio-economic study, but also to look at the different tourism activities in South Pentecost and identify areas which need to be improved. We've been a chance to look around for visiting all the tourism activities. Um, uh, for one, I mean, Nangol, we've been watching Nangol on Saturday, uh, London, uh, Nangol, blo, Mr. Luke Fago. Some areas we've been identifying uh, where community has been likely to have a site for tour guide training. Time where tourists have been stopped, they've been watching Nangol. Uh, tour guide has been stopped with them tourists all the time, where all the time work for tour guide, they've been stopped closely with them uh, tourists. From suppose where tourists have got some questions for ask them, or they look, look, they maybe look at some questions for asking, maybe they got some important. Uh, Activities we take place is on custom tanis. One of them is custom tanis. One of them is custom tanis. So, all kind of areas are there. Information is there. To a guide, we need to stop with them tourists all the time. Maybe we have got some good place for tourists to have a seat and we build in some seats. So, yes, we got need. But we are so fortunate to have a visit to the tourism products. But we look at yes, we got big need for improvements, for facilities. More to the site for capacity building for all um, community members. With the escalating damages that have already been done to their forests and the continuing desire of the villagers to cultivate their land to earn cash for their basic needs, they have put their resources in a critical situation. With that rate, if nothing is done to stop this man-made disaster, it can have a negative impact on the forests and water catchments, thus causing a threat to their livelihood and survival. Therefore, water catchment protection is one of the major values that should be included in the conservation strategy for the area, because its quality and quantity depends on the protection of the forest. People depend on water for their agriculture production and for their living, so protecting it is a necessity to ensure a good quality of life in the future. I am about management and environment. example, water, I water. I Penaya, mana kita mantap, inokat, strong tok tok, all mana ni megem work we, all orang belablo mibel belablo bivo ni no megem, all megem karen lo side lo riba, all megem karen lo source lo water, megem se, inokat some something lo give him water from, you misalnya se wood na give him water. I think this is a this is a very good timing. Timing blow make him say every 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 something where you may lose him, he must come back because you may, you may, people blow today you may not have a rob generation blow tomorrow. Therefore, you must preserve him something where you, you may lose him finish. Blow generation where he may come back and fifty years, hundred years down the line, but he's having come enjoy the same something or they will have new things, new plants and new some old plants especially. When new plants it can't germinate, but you must have enjoy him. During the trip, local communities requested the expansion of the protected area to cover the coastal marine zone as to counter the decline in fishing catches, 
it included over 600 hectares of marine protected areas, which is yet to be confirmed. Conservation and development activities will implement a holistic approach called Reach to Reef. This approach aims to find ways to reduce soil erosion and other polluted water from the farm and untreated water that is causing threat to coastal ecosystems and coral reefs. A formal agreement with landowners has established a 3,677 hectares community conservation area consisting of land and marine areas. Preparations have been undertaken to nominate the area as a UNESCO World Heritage Site.